Good evening. Happy Monday. Right, like happy Monday. All right, we got a little bit of music. Let's let everyone get in. Nice, nice, nice. Happy Monday because Mondays are happy. I'm happy on a Monday. You should be happy on a Monday. Who's not happy on a Monday? I don't know how many times I can say that aloud. It still sound okay. I'm done. Right? Like, okay, I'm done. All right. I love this, everyone. In, 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 in. Huh. So, how was everyone's weekend? I hope as fantastic as mine. Um, I always have a really good weekend. I always have a really good day. You know, we work hard and we're rewarded. I spend most of my day talking to all of our clients and spending time constantly improving and growing the system. In fact, I spoke to Brian already today. Like I speak to everyone. So I hope your day was as good as mine and the weekend and all the rest of it. Cool, let's give it two minutes. Let it allow everyone to get in. Hey, what's up, Ann? All right, all right, all right. We'll give it one more minute. I'm uh, honestly too excited to wait till 8.03. Like I need to do it now. Like a child, right? Like I want it now. Um, except I'm not a child, so let's go. All right, we'll shut off the music. I feel 8.02 is just around the corner. It's how many seconds away? Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, it's 8.02, okay. So, hope everyone had the most amazing weekend. Great. I wanted to take the opportunity. Now, I know Saturday, so two days ago, I sent out the partnership link in, um, in distributed marketing. Right, I'm just pulling it up now so I can actually re-give it to you, right? So I go through Google, type in distributed marketing, allow it to come up. So I'm pulling up Rhino Partners, become a Rhino Partner, and I have the link. Okay, great. I'm going to put it in here for everyone. And we're going to go through the site, so I'll allow you to kind of see where it is. But what's important about the link is a couple of things. One, in claiming your 50 coin a month, like the 50 coin we're just giving to everyone that's a part of the platform, it's going to be through those who are signed up for the partnership. Not because we're saying we're giving you this if you do this. No, it's just an organized way of keeping those that are on the platform that are engaged with the platform, right? So if you go ahead and sign up for the partnership and say you never do anything, you never offer the link to anyone, you never do any type of referral, whatever, at least we have you organized in the collection of members that are like, hey, I'm an actual member of this platform. I do care about the platform, hence me opting into something for the platform. And since the partnership is such an easy opt-in, okay, hey, I'm by opting in, I'm collecting 50 coin for free every month, plus an additional 10 coin for everyone I just bring to the webinar. Well, why wouldn't I, right? So I'm going to post that again. If you are not part of the partnership, please, please, please go ahead and do so. And again, I wanna, I wanna kind of share why I say please. For this program, for this platform to be successful, I've already identified and already have, have accepted and already planned for it to be one of which everyone needs to be a part of it. For instance, if for those that think I'm just a complete wacko that likes coming out here at eight o'clock every day because I have nothing else to do, let me assure you only half of that trait. Like I'm completely wacky, but I do have other things to do. In fact, I was laying and enjoying dinner until I saw the time and I was like, oh, gotta get up, gotta get to my office because I have a responsibility to our platform. What I mean by that is for our platform to be successful, for our coin to reach the valuations that we want them to reach, that we calculate them to reach, that we're forecasting to reach, we need a certain level of participation. That participation is always really great in the beginning. Everything you ever try in the beginning, everyone's excited. Then as it progresses, some people become less excited. Okay, I've seen this, I've done that, I've been a part of it, I'm no longer a part of it. That's where the coin comes in. Because we are giving everyone the coin, and because as, as time rolls on, that coin will move up in value, that will offset that retention rate, right? So for those that are like, oh, I've been doing Rhino for two months, 
uh, you know, I kind of just whatever, right? But you know what? I do own a bunch of coin that's actually worth a lot of money. So not only is Rhino where I get entertainment from, uh, not only is Rhino where I kind of uh, am able to put on a different hat and look at things a different way, but it's also a part of my future. It's also part of my investment portfolio. It's also one of the more exciting, lucrative things that I'm doing. Therefore, I do stay in touch with it. When we have that level of retention ship, it then supports the entire platform as everyone that says, oh, e -ooh, ah, you know what, let me just stay here. And that builds and builds and builds. So what is the investment that we, um, that we put out for that? It's the coin every month. What is it? So if that coin per month is so valuable that it allows someone to offset their maybe lack of excitement with a exuberance of making investable income and invested money and having a future that they might not have already had, what does it mean I have to do today? Again, everything leads to the next thing. Everything in life is a domino. This leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, which means I have to actually make it my job, make it my obligation, make it my responsibility, pound the table and say, get in the partnership so that I can give you coin. Um, do you have any samples of email signatures we can use on our partnership link? But so, Arnett, yes. So this week we will be coming out with a partnership package. I want to create a package that has my own wording and emails, has my own this, 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 signatures, etc., so that you could take that and then disseminate it. So we're we're it's a lot of balls in the air right now because I do know that those that are most that are the most valuable to this platform and being individuals that can disseminate a message and passion and share an exuberance with people are the members of the platform. Because you are here and because you're here with me, we, we think similar, right? So you're already, all right, Ann, I like it. I understand it. I believe it. You are so super valuable to this platform because you're the one that could go out and then tell other people. And then you tell people who tell people who tell people who tell people. Who tell people. That's of the main things we have on our agenda for this week to really, really support that. If it means I have to give you more coin, if it means whatever it means, I want to support that. You are valuable to us, and I want to make sure that you know that. Secondly, we're going to get marketing started. Now, marketing, I want it to be started by today. It looks like it might not be started until Wednesday because things are just moving, right? You never know what you don't know. But I will tell you something quite exciting. So, as I take a look at our projections, right, the Rhino coin balance sheet that everyone has access to, and I'll walk everyone through it again, <sighs> really exciting stuff. So I'm like, okay, we didn't get marketing started today. We're going to get started by Wednesday. And as I'm looking at that sheet, I'm like, oh my God, I have to do it by Wednesday because I need these numbers. I need these numbers to be accurate. I need these numbers to stay. I'm, I'm accountable to those projections. Therefore, I need to do it. Therefore, I take a look at my own life and say, okay, all right, I have to make sure this is done by this date, this is done by this date, this is done by this time so that I can hit this. The point of me saying that is when I went ahead and introduced why we're the first and only company ever to offer a balance sheet that actually has real-time view-only uh, metrics and performance and statistics and forecasts that's all calculated to the next thing was because I said to you, it's not that Anthony's so smart and Anthony's saying this is going to be what it is which I believe it'll be, but that's something you can only grade me after the fact. You can't grade it before the fact. That's like me saying, hey, listen, if you do this, this will happen. Just trust me. Yeah, if I'm right, cool. But if I'm wrong, then what? You wasted how much time believing that was going to happen? That's not, that's not okay, right? Like you deserve a higher level of certainty than, hey, don't worry, just trust me. What the projection, what the balance sheet actually does is it shows you in real time this, 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 this. If this is happening, then this is happening, then this is happening, and this just happened, then this just happened. So you always know exactly where we are. And more so than that, you're always able to see exactly where we're going because the projections are all calculated on exactly what is happening in the, in the context of what exactly is happening. So to that point, when I take a look at it, when I take a look at it, I'm like, oh my God, I really got to move fast. I got to move fast. And I... As an aside, those that know me know this sounds crazy. Those that don't know me might believe this. My, my watch is always telling me to breathe, right? As a, those that don't know me might just take this as whatever. 
I'm a really fast human being. Like I'm constantly doing this and I think I need to move faster. Like I'm in a complete panic that I need to move faster and to do more. And I cannot imagine a better position to be and then being within a company that has that type of personality at the top. So it's not me patting myself on the back, but I've been around the block and back. And not only do I think I'm one of a kind, but to go ahead and offer others an opportunity to be a part of something led by this type of personality that is completely generous, that I want everyone to be a part of it. We're giving everything to everyone. But at the same time, we're so focused on making sure that things go not only the way they're supposed to, but better is a good position to be in. So I just want to share that with you. Okay. So as it gets to what Rhino is, the email we sent today, yeah, no, it, and, and thank you, Brian. So the email we sent today, I wanted to make it a little bit more clearer, right? So like, I'm still kind of looking for the best email template, right? So last week we were sending it with a little bit of Rhino news, offering a little bit of news that kind of boils your blood a little bit. Like, oh my God, the wealth distribution from the 1% to the bottom 99% is so, so beyond extreme that these particular news articles are allowed to happen because these people control this, right? So we went through it. And even as I was going through it, I'm like, this is, a, this is good, but it's taking too much time. I don't feel like I'm getting to the point. I feel like I'm not getting to the meat and potatoes. And then we had the rhino wealth in there as well. And it's like, okay, everyone sees we're making a lot of money, but do I want people to look at the email and say, oh, they're a stock trading thing, or I didn't want people to lose sight. Then I had the Rhino University and Rhino Marketplace and Rhino Traffic and the things lined up. And I'm like, okay, well, now people are seeing there's a lot of things in it, but maybe they're getting confused, right? So what is Rhino? How is it that we're going to change the world? What is the game plan? What is something that's easily to able to be understood that kind of just makes sense, right? Like, so as I was driving into work, I was thinking to myself, well, the only thing that makes sense is thinking backwards. And of course I would say that, right? Like, of course I'm so nuts that I think the best way to make sense is to think of things backwards, right? <sighs> so I made rice tonight with lemon in, right, in the water, in the rice maker. Oh my God, what a hit. I think I had one too many bowls and I'm reminded by that because I just tasted it. And I gotta tell you, still delicious. Anyways, so as I was driving into work, I'm thinking, you know what, what if I just did it backwards? Because I think that's might have been how I've came up with this. Like, is that the best way to understand what it is we're doing? So I'm just going to try it on for size and let's see what happens, right? So let's start with our premise, right? What is it that we're looking to change? What is Rhino's mission statement? And I believe it's something to the effect of, the wealth distribution has become so extreme that that inequality is the ground zero of our society. That is our belief, that because there are so few that own so much that they have a, um, an unfair advantage and an unfair influence over a correct market system. Like, for instance, if these people have this and these people have that, then when they go to make a decision and negotiation, something, there's always a compromise because they both have equal to bring to the party. Even if it's not completely fair, it's still close to it, right? If, if this person has 70% of things and this person has 30% of things, they still got to kind of be honest with the decision, with an agreement. Now, the 70% person's like, hey, listen, well, I'm going to use a little leverage. But the 30% person still has enough skin in the game that they're like, I'm not going to be pushed by you, and maybe you'll get a little better of a deal, but if I'm just smarter than you, then I can offset the deal that you're getting or the perceived value you're getting by my intelligence allowing me to earn more than you, than you have the vision to see what I'm doing, right? Like, for instance, if, I, if we're making a deal and you have more money than me, and I go ahead and sell you something that's overpriced, and you're foolish enough to buy it and I buy something from you underpriced because you're foolish enough to sell it, that 70, 30 could come into like 60, 40, 50. The point is it's in the right area. When one person has 99 and one person has one, 
There is no fairness anymore. That person at 99 could conceivably make 99 wrong decisions in a row and lose one each time for this person to then be in the situation they're in, right? They are 99 times more, I'm gonna say the word powerful, even though I'm going to explain why I don't mean it, but they're 99% bigger, 99 times bigger, more powerful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, than the one, than the one percent. And this is what I mean by that. That is exactly what we have today, right? The top 1% of the population has 99% of the wealth, which means the bottom 99% of the population share only 1% of the wealth, which means 1% of the population has 99 times more than the bottom rest of the world. Therefore, you cannot even come close to saying any congressman, any company CEO, any elite individual, anyone that's of high net worth is acting in fairness. It's impossible. It just is impossible because they can have whatever they want. They have 99 times more than anyone that they're talking to. Therefore, they can go ahead and maneuver things any way they want. For instance, they could go ahead and have tax law move a certain way. They could go ahead and have regulations move a certain way. They could go ahead and say, all right, you know what? I'll fund these riots over here. And then when they pass a bill, I'm going to have the congressman put in a salt tax deduction that goes ahead and allows me to not only pay for the rights that I afforded, but allows me and everyone to re reap tax benefits for years to come. And you might say, Ant, that sounds crazy. Well, look it up, salt deduction in the Build Back Better bill, right? Over $300 billion was given out as tax credits, tax advantages to the top 1%. But nobody knew that because Kyle Rittenhouse was deemed um, not guilty by a jury of his peers. Do you think it's any coincidence that happened on the same day? Do you think it's any coincidence that Jeff Bezos just came out and gave a hundred million dollar donation to Obama's con um, whatever the hell he does, whether it's um, charity, I think, go look it up. Just gave a hundred million. And one could say, wow, look at that. Like Jeff Bezos is, he's so rich. He's given to a good cause, it's Obama. Like Obama's Obama, of course he's doing something great. Does anyone have a brain to think, well, Obama was president for eight years. The president now is Obama's lackey and he's everyone's lackey because he's actually not even coherent. Jeff Bezos was the richest man in the world. It's now Elon Musk, but what are we talking about? 120 to 115 billion. Um, Jeff Bezos company, Amazon, does not pay fair taxes at all. Um, Amazon's located in California, a Democratic state. Amazon makes close to 400, 500 billion of free cash flow a year. Let's see, 1% of tax rate on them, therefore would equal $5 billion. No, they make 500, 500 billion in revenue, 1% is five, yeah, 1%, every 1% is 5 billion in taxes. Huh, the person now, you would think would be most, in, most influential. If Obama came out and said, I think Jeff Bezos and Amazon should be taxed fairly, he's the example, everyone look, 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 what would happen to Amazon? If, if someone in Congress, if someone in the Democratic Party was talking about taxes, which they just did, build back better, you, do you think it's any coincidence that Amazon didn't get touched? Could you then conceivably say that this 100 million was maybe a thank you for the eight years he was in office? Maybe a thank you for the four years of this guy in office? Maybe a thank you of the bill that didn't touch his company? I don't know, I wasn't there. But I can tell you that if you think Jeff Bezos just gave 100 million because he just happens to be in a good mood, you're out of your mind. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. 100 million is a large sum of money. And it did not go to Obama, who's not even a president anymore, who by all accounts is a citizen sitting somewhere, who came into the presidency poor. I think he was partially bankrupt. And now he's buying five to $10 million houses all over the place. In what world do you go to Congress, you go to DC to become rich? Who becomes a public servant, a public servant to become rich? Only in the US. So the point is, now, how would we stop that, right? Like, how can you stop that? Well, one, the wealth distribution, you could really start making a little bit more fair and balanced, right? 
Jeff Bezos should not be making that much more. That's that's that much more money over the person underneath him, right? Okay. Media should be fair and balanced. They should not be owned by the top one percent. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're the top one percent, and you know, like, do you think it's any coincidence Rupert Murdoch bought the New York Times and Wall Street Journal? Do you think it's any coincidence Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post? Do you think these people bought newspapers because they're like, well, I just love newspapers. No, they buy media and then media disseminates a message. The point is the media is to the highest bidder. Like Bill Gates has given the media 319 million, which was one of our emails over the last two years. Bill Gates is also on every board of every type of COVID vaccination from Merck to Pfizer to Moderna. Bill Gates is also a proponent of the vaccination. Put it together. The media scares people and says everyone needs to be vaccinated. Bill Gates is on the board and directly profits from vaccinations. Media interviews Bill Gates and asks him what he believes about vaccinations. Is, is it like, am I, in, am I in cuckoo land? Like, am I the only one that could ever see something like that? The point is, how do you solve that? Well, now all of a sudden, if the distribution, like for instance, President Biden, right? His poll numbers, I think, are like 34%. I don't, again, I'm not getting political. He just happens to be the president, and that happens to be his poll numbers, right? They're so bad that the media is no longer protecting him because now the media goes to the person that's most valuable. So you have other people in the Democratic Party that, like, whether it's Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or, or Kamala Harris or whomever. Others that are more popular, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that are more popular than Joe Biden. So when they say something that's not, uh, not so well receptive to Joe Biden, the media runs it because they're saying, well, this person can be of value to us. Well, back when Trump was running against Joe Biden, no matter what Joe Biden said, if he farted, it smelled like roses because the media looked at him as he's really important. We want to hitch our wagon to that guy. And that's fine. I understand that. You ride the coattails of the person that can bring you the furthest. That's fine. And they're doing it now because his ratings plummeted. So they were never loyal to him. They never thought this guy is, has the best ideas. They just said, okay, he could take us to the next place. Oh, now he can't? Who can? Who can? Who can? The point is, if there was a, if there was a more equal level of wealth distribution, then you'd have media that would be fairly representative of all points of view. For instance, let's say the wealth distribution was the top 1% had only 10, the top 1% had only 10% of the wealth of the nation, right? And the top 50% had say 70% of the wealth of the population, the nation. And the bottom 50% had 30%, right? Everyone was kind of fairly represented. You know, some people had more, some people had less. And I can tell you through knowing people, some people are just, more qualified, they're more competent, they're more capable. And then you meet people that are just less capable, less competent. You will always have your Indians and your chiefs, right? That's, that's the world. Some people are leaders and some people are followers, but you need them both. If everyone was a leader, it'd be a problem. If everyone was a follower, it'd be a problem. But if the wealth was more evenly distributed, then the media would be able to go ahead and say, okay, those guys are picking the democratic people and I get it, good for them. But what about the people that want the Republican people? Well, let's go ahead and talk to them. There's some that are represented. And you're able to, as a media, then take a look at the lay of the land and say, okay, these people are represented, this people represent, these people are not represented, let's go out them. Because everyone has something to give you. Everyone has a piece of the pie. When only 1% have the whole entire pie, there is no reason for the media to go ahead and, and share any other point of view, because this is what happens. When they go ahead and share, Okay, let's say CNN tomorrow came out and was pro-Trump because they said, well, everyone is pro-Biden. Everyone is anti-Trump. Therefore, we're going to be pro-Trump because we know there is a large percent of the population that that would be receptive to. Therefore, as a media outlet, we want to earn those viewers. Therefore, we're going to disseminate a message that's going to earn us those viewers. That sounds fine. That sounds like a natural business plan. That sounds like a good idea. What happens though? The top 1% who own all the other media say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You think you're gonna go against us? Watch this, 
hold my beer, MSNBC, MSNBC, CNN, all you guys, so let's start talking about them. Facebook, Facebook, come over here. Did you like being a monopoly? You're gonna own the metaverse, remember? Like, we're letting you, come over here. Uh, we need to know their search results, go ahead and put some fake news out there. People that are, re are receptive to them, let's block their accounts, let's silence them. Other people, let's give them a megaphone. You know how to do it through the ad spend, other businesses, let's cut them off. Google, yeah, 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 we, yeah, Google, you, over here. You think we're letting you own YouTube and Gmail as a, another monopoly for no reason? Come over here. Search results, we want search results. Anyone that types in CNN, we want to know that they're, they're little baby diddlers. Anyone that types in anything else, okay, CNN, watch this. Boom. Trump, he's racist, he's homophobic. How dare they do that? How could they? They're trying to incite an insurrection. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, shut that media down. Do you think any media in the world wants to deal with that? They don't. Therefore, as a responsible business, companies have to make a decision who is their customer. If 1% owns 99% of the wealth, they know who their customer is. Therefore, their messages and their fairness and everything is never fair and balanced. It's always going to their audience. Like, for instance, if I walk into a locker room full of men and say, huh, guys, women can't live with them, can't kill them. You know what happens? A bunch of people laugh because I know my audience. It's guys. It's a locker room. If I go into, I don't know, um, I don't know where a bunch of women hang out. If I go to a nail salon, right? And I go, ha, huh, women can't live with them, can't kill them. All the women look at me like, seriously? Like, are you, get this guy. You got to know your audience. And anyone that says, Anthony, you said that, like, enough. It, it's an example. It's a joke over. The point is you have to know your audience. And if your audience is only one person, it's only the 1%. Well, then it's not fair to the other 99%. So how do we go ahead and fix that? How do we go ahead and solve that? How can we be a part of that? So that's the business of it. And when one takes a look at how things are divvied up, it's actually quite simple. It's actually the most simple thing I've ever been a part of in my life. In fact, we have the biggest opportunity ever in the history of the world because it's so simple. Now, do not convince, do not confuse simple with easy, right? It's not easy, but it's simple. And here's how that works. The top 1% own 99% of the wealth. Okay. So they own the apartment buildings. They own the houses. They own the stores. They own the government. They own all these institutions. All of those institutions, because they're so large, because the top 1% have 99% of the wealth, so they have to invest that money somewhere, it's only scalable to population. What I mean by that is say, for instance, I have, um, I'm a millionaire, right? Like I have $1 million. I have a million dollars and I want to start a business today. How many customers do I need? Not that many, I only have a million dollars. I could start a business and if I have a thousand customers and each customer is worth $100 a year to me, that means in 10 years, I made a million dollars, which means my investment has a 10% ROI on a yearly basis. That's not, that's not terrible. So if I have a million dollars, I only need a thousand, a thousand customers, right? Cool. And God forbid the, um, the lifetime value or the ROI is higher, it, you get the numbers, right? Okay. Well, say my business is really successful. Now I have $2 million. Well, conceivably, I need a business twice the size to continue my living standards. See, people believe that people that have money have it so easy. They don't. That money needs to go somewhere. They have to then go ahead and identify investments to put it in. They have to identify places to put it because everybody wants it. Everybody wants their money. More money, more problems, to quote the famous and late great uh, Biggie Smalls, right? So you have to put the money somewhere. So now let's say you have $10 million. Oh my God. I have these girls that like me. I don't think it's for my looks. I have these kids calling me. I have these people wanting a job. I have these people trying to steal from me. I have this congressman coming at me every day. I have these person making the threats. Oh, okay. You see the stress of having that much money? It's not like People that don't have $10 million don't know what it's like to have $10 million. It's not all apple pie. It's a lot of stuff. But let's continue. 
Now my $10 million business is so successful. Let's say I have a billion dollars, right? What do you do with a billion dollars? Like right now, if you had a billion dollars, what do you do with it? Okay, well, I put some in my bank account. At what? A 0.01 savings rate? Oh, I would buy bonds. At what? Less than 1% for government bond. That is an inflation of 6%. Okay, I own stocks. At an all-time high? Okay, I own real estate. At an all-time high? Okay, um, I'll bring it offshore. With all the different transactions that get monitored left and right for terrorists and all the rest, you're going to move money offshore. You're going to pay all those fees. You're going to have people wonder wh where the money went. Okay. I'm going to donate to a charity. Oh, and you're going to evade taxes like that? You're going to donate to a charity? Then why have the money to begin with? Okay. Um, I'm going to open a business. All right, cool. What kind of business? Do you have tax law? Do you have accountants? Do you have managers? Do you have lawyers? No? Okay. How about you try hiring them? Oh, you want to go hire people? Okay, there's more job open. There's more, there's more job openings than people that would fill them. And plus all the populations enjoying being home collecting enhanced unemployment, which has now come off, but they're afraid of COVID. And COVID's out there. They don't want to go outside. In fact, they're so lazy because they haven't worked in the last year or two, they're not even good employees anymore. And the fact that other people are willing to hire them for, for the same price is called the, the great resignation time. Do you ever hear that saying? Everyone's resigning their job because they have another job they could go to. It's like everyone's playing Tinder in real life. Oh, job, job. Oh, I like you. Well, I'm going to take this job too. No, yes, no, yes. You want to go hire those people? Great. Oh, you want to, well, now you need a manager. Well, you got to manage those people. So now everyone's accountable. Okay, and what is your business? Where are you getting the property? Where are you getting the, uh, where are you getting the supplies from? We have a, a supply bottleneck. No, nothing's coming over. You have ports backed up. Oh, you're, you're worried about taxes. What state are you going to do? Are you going to do it in that state? What would you do with a billion dollars? Now take that example and realize that the top 1% that have 99% of the wealth of this globe, that number's in the hundreds of trillions. How many people are in the top 1%? Well, there's 7 billion people in the globe, right? So 1% is, what's that come out to so like 70 million? So 70 million people divided by, let's say, 100 trillion. The point is the top 1%, each one has billions of dollars, right? So each one of them has that problem. Now here's the, the big, so not only do they have that problem, but they're all competing against each other with that problem, which means all of their businesses, all of their assets are really quite vulnerable because they can't manage it all. They have no ability to manage it all. They, they come into like a hundred million dollars and they go ahead and buy a store and say, okay, hire someone to manage the store and, and make sure that things get sold and have someone buy it and have some, that's what they do. So you know where the power actually lies? The 99%. You know why? Because we have all the population. You know why? Because we're so nimble. We don't have all these businesses. We don't have all this, this stuff that they have. We can do whatever the hell we want. In fact, if we decided right now, this second, all of us decided, all right, guys, listen, nobody, nobody shop at Target ever again. No Target ever again. Do you know what would happen to Target? They'd be gone. Because Target is completely 100% dependent on customers. See, here's the thing that no one ever realizes. The top 1% are completely dependent on customers because they have so much money that that money had to go to investing. That investment is in businesses, which means they have taken money out of their pockets, invested it in businesses, have, have also taken loans out against that money to grow the businesses. So it, so it's actually quite sad. The top 1%, they have no fear of going to zero dollars. Their life will never end with zero dollars. It's either going to end with 100 billion or negative 100 billion. Because when these businesses go to zero, the amount of money they own in debt and long-term debt and bonds and mortgages and bankruptcies is through the roof. Meaning, if the population ever as a whole made a decision in unison and said, hey, listen, we're not going to patronize this company until they do this. You could, I don't want to use the word extort, 
but you could tell any business to do anything that you want them to do. So are you concerned in the progression of laziness with universal income in turn actually making society worse than better? We're kind of seeing the outcome of this with COVID. Yes, I do. But I don't think that's what we're, that's not what, that's a mischaracterization of what we're saying and not saying you are purposely wrong, but I, let me just explain a little better because that's not what we're talking about. But I do agree with you. To an extent, I do think there is a level of people out there that just are not qualified to do any of the new economy because technology has, technology has advanced far quicker than people's education. Because you gotta remember, a computer could advance like that overnight. A person can only advance due to going to school, the education system advancing, and learning new stuff. So the population as a whole would take like a decade to make the same advancement technology could overnight. So I think technology has advanced so much that there actually is a percentage of the population that is completely ill-equipped to be in this economy. And I do think that level, that percentage of population should enjoy universal income. Because I don't believe people should live miserably. I don't people believe people should go die. So what do you do when technology has, has disqualified a percentage of the population from actually contributing, right? That's a moral question. And it's very easy to say, oh, well, you know, they're lazy. I I'm not saying people are lazy. I think there are people that are lazy, but I think that's because they don't have any choice or they don't have the requisite belief in the future. I'm talking about people that are just purely ill-equipped to do this economy. That's that. So anyway, so if the population got together and said, hey, listen, Target, we're not going anymore. Target would so quickly run. Guys, 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 please, 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 I'll do anything, I'll do anything. Yeah, we'll cut our prices in half. We'll go ahead and make the minimum wage uh, $40 an hour. Just somebody, like, you can't do this, you can't do this. Please, 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 we work so hard, we work so hard, we work so hard. That's what every company in the world would do because the 99% own the world. They don't own the money, but they own the power, which means this is the most opportune time in history that if a collection of people could somehow disseminate a message that unites the 99% in unison and allows them all to move in the same direction while each one is completely benefiting in their own right, you have the ability to not only save the world, but to go ahead and redistribute the wealth in a fair way. Mary, but there are lots of jobs that have nothing to do with the technical aspect of economy, carpenter, truck driver, et cetera. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm saying there is a percentage of the population that is completely ill-equipped. Now, that percentage of population might be carpenters, but if there are no carpenter jobs available because all the carpenter jobs are already taken, well, then what do you do to those people, right? So I'm just saying that if, if, if the answer is even one person, then my statement's correct. So I'm not going to debate what percentage it is because neither one of us really know it. But the premise is I do believe there is a percentage of people that this economy has left behind. And the reason I believe that is because I believe technology has advanced far quicker than education. And I believe that the unfairness of this economy over the last 20, 30, 40 years, whether it be presidential candidates outsourcing particular jobs to make favorable trade deals, with other countries. I believe we've been sold out left and right, basically. And it, yeah, inequality is real. So what is, so how is Rhino gonna solve that, right? Like we, yeah, it can't, like I get it, but like, what are you gonna do about it? So the premise behind Rhino is exactly that. Like that's exactly, oh, tell Hubby we said hi. Mary, we love you, see you later. So what is the premise? Like what is it, how are we going to solve that, right? So. Rhino is a complete platform, right? That's completely free. And well, actually let's start from the back working our way forward, right? So we believe Rhino coin could be worth over $100,000 per coin. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Rhino coin, like any currency, is valued by supply and demand. When demand is stronger than supply, 
price moves up. When demand is weaker than supply, price moves down. That direction, that magnitude of stronger or weaker is made up of um, adoption, like how many people are using it, transactions, how many people are transacting in it, volume of transactions, how much is actually being transacted, demand ratio, how many people want it versus how much is in existence, and growth rate, what is, what is it growing? Is it still growing forward? Therefore, it's going to be valued more in the future. Therefore, it's an asset that I want to own. Those are all the components that would make up of the value of a currency. Okay, so let's continue work backwards. How do we make a platform that has a very, very high membership rate, a very, very high you know, business rate, a very, very high transaction rate, volume of transactions, demand ratio, and growth rate? Okay, so effectively, we want to create a platform that has a lot of transactions on it because that's the demand for the coin to get to that price. Okay, so how do we do that? All right, well, it's very difficult to just go ahead and find businesses and then convince businesses to come with you because our whole premise so far is that the economy has been so unfair that businesses don't have it very good. Therefore, businesses that are doing well are likely gonna say, hey, we're doing well, we're gonna stay right where we are. So to go ahead and, and, and other businesses that are not doing so well are like, hey, we're going out of business, right? Like, I don't know what to tell you. So for us to go ahead and make a business of saying, a business plan of saying, hey, let's go find businesses and then bring them over, A, is not a very good idea because there's not many to go find, but B, what's the cost of that? How do we entice the business to come over to us? Well, you would entice them by saying, okay, well, we can offer you this, 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 and this. All right, well, how are you paying for the things that you're offering them? All right, we're gonna offer you this, this, and this, and we're gonna charge you this. Now you have to convince a business to leave what they're doing that's already successful to come to you on the belief that you're gonna be able to do it better and they're gonna pay you because they believe you so much. I'm not saying that's impossible, but I'm saying you could see the level of friction in that business plan. So that's not a good idea. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? All right, so what if we just make a platform of, and didn't bring on businesses, we brought on just people, right? Okay, you can do that a free platform that brings on people. Okay, cool. Well, why are these people gonna come to it, right? Like they could go anywhere. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna make services. We're gonna make really high value offerings. We're going to, you know, things that used to cost money per month as a membership, we're gonna give away for free. And we're gonna grow those offerings so that anyone that's on our platform has the ability to have this, 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 all normally 30, 40, 200, $300 a month products and offerings, and we're gonna allow them to have it for free. Okay, people, people like that. How are you paying for that though? Because if you're bringing them on for free, then they're not paying you. And if you're offering them stuff, you're investing or, or you have an expense. So you're giving people stuff for free that costs you money to do. Therefore, how do you do that? Like how, as a company, how do you just give away money? You can't. So that idea doesn't work. Okay. All right, this is difficult. How do I make transactions on a platform with businesses? And, and if, if everything's free, then how do I make transactions? And if I need transactions supposed to support the value of the coin, because our premise is it's gonna be worth over 100,000, how can I do that when everything's free? And how do I bring on businesses and tell them to pay me because I'm going to do better for them. Okay. What if, what if our offerings were to our members that we were going to be able to turn them into businesses, right? Because there's plenty of people. If businesses are not having a good time in the economy and they're going out of business, that means we have an overabundance of people. We have, we have less businesses and more non-businesses. Okay, cool. We got something. There's a bunch of non-businesses out there and they're all frustrated because they're not having a good time, which means they might be receptive to a better way. Okay, that's good. That's a scalable market. A market that's an overabundance, that's frustrated and they're receptive. Perfect. Okay, 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 we're getting somewhere. Huh. All right, so now those offerings we're offering, what if we 
What if we made them into business offerings? Hey, what do we call it? Let's call it Rhino University, all right? So, Mr. Jones, if you come onto our platform, we're going to allow you to go to Rhino University. Rhino University is a free offering. It allows you to submit your business or your business idea. And upon submission, we're going to work with you hand in hand in building the website, building the app. And because obviously you like this, right? That's a good idea. Everyone else likes this too. So that overabundance of non-businesses that are frustrated, we're bringing them all on. Therefore, your business is going to have an embedded audience already because we have all of these people coming on. And because we're bringing you from zero to hero, from non-business to business, I think you're going to be quite pleased with us. You might actually be even so much as loyal to us. Therefore, the, the, the luxury that you now have of us being able to offer you our members to patronize your product, you're going to say, I could have never done this without the Rhino family without the Rhino platform, without the Rhino uh, members, without the Rhino customers. Therefore, I want to give back. Well, how is he going to give back? Or she, right? Well, because we're doing this with every person, then every non-business is becoming a business, which means every business is a customer of every other business because they all started as non-businesses. They all owe their success to the integration of each other. Okay. We could do that. But wait, 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 wait. It still costs money. I'm still just giving things away for free. I have to pay for team. I have to pay for software. I have to pay for a lot of this stuff. How is that even happening? And I'm going to make more offerings. Uh, Rhino Wealth, Rhino Health, Rhino Music, Rhino Events, Rhino Politics, Rhino Sports, Rhino Dating. How am I going to make all of that plus do all this stuff for companies making apps and marketplaces? Where's the money coming from? But I, but I know that if I was able to do that, then what do we have? Members, adoptions, business, transactions, demand ratio, growth rate. We have everything that would support the value of the coin that we spoke of. Okay. So how do we make the money? And more importantly, how do we... If we're going to get that coin that high, don't we want everyone to participate? We want everyone on the platform to be so motivated by what that coin's worth. Well, how do we get them motivated for what that coin's worth? More so than that, how do we get them motivated to be an active participant in pushing the coin to be worth that much? And how would they do that, right? Well, if the coin's based on members and transactions and growth rate and demand ratio and, 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 and all of that, good stuff and volume and transaction volume, well, then you would, you could directly affect the value of the coin by participating in that, meaning by being a member of the platform, meaning by patronizing the other members of the platform, the other businesses of the platform. Okay. So you're telling me the non-businesses that become businesses that are appreciative of what we did for them for free, that realize they're only in that position because these people supported them now have a more reason to support each other because now they all own a coin that they're directly responsible for raising the value of? Oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. Huh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Anthony, how are you paying for this? And more importantly, how are people getting coin? Where's this coin coming from? How are they just getting coin? Okay. Right, so we have to make a coin. Okay, make a coin. Make a coin. E, E, E. Okay, we got a coin. How do we, how do we share, how do we make this an opportunity though? Like, hey, you want this coin? Like, no, what is it? All right, the value, the value of this coin is gonna be based on, what do we do? By making it the exclusive means of transaction by January, 2023 on the platform, okay? So every transaction has to be in this coin, January, 2023, which is 13 months from now. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So we know that that coin is going to be worth whatever it's worth based on the metrics in January 2023, which means we have 13 months to bring on members, businesses, uh, transactions, demand ratio, growth rate, et cetera. Okay, that gives us a lot of time to reach those goals. But still, that coin's not till January 2023. How am I getting money for it today? How am I funding any of this? 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So for those members that understand what it is, what we're doing, we're going to allow you to buy the coin before they can. Okay, that makes sense. Let's give a deal to someone. Well, it's only a deal if you can make a market of it, right? Like if I told you, hey, listen, I'll sell you this today, but you have to wait for January 2023 to sell it. You'd be like, and I like, I believe in you and this sounds great, but 13 months from now, I might be living in a COVID vaccination camp, which they're doing in Australia, by the way. If you have COVID or you're not getting vaccinated, they put you in a, right? Like I remember that something like that in Germany. Um, oh, we'll never let that happen again. Yeah, I'm sure you won't, right? Anyway, beyond the point, Okay, so how do I make this a market? How do I make this a deal? How do I make people want it? All right, let's, let's make it a managed market. Let's guarantee the market. Okay, in January, the coins were two cents. Okay, in February, the coins were three cents. In March, the coins were four cents. Every month, it's a penny higher. You can never, ever, ever, ever buy it for the price it was the month before. And you can always, always, always sell it at, at whatever price you want, depending on the month you're in which means you guarantee everyone the ability to buy something low and sell it high. Well, Ant, that sounds great, but how are you going to pay for that? Now, Ant, not only do you not have money to build a platform, but now you're gonna go ahead and guarantee people profits. Where's the money coming from? Okay, Oof. well, I know supply and demand, right? And I know that the coin I'm selling, the proceeds directly funds the platform. Therefore, the more people that buy the coin, the more funds fund the platform, which directly supports the growth that then supports the coin value over there. Okay, so if everyone acts together, we can do this together. Okay, cool. But Ant, how are you guaranteeing the price is gonna go higher? Like it's supply and demand, Ant. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, God, you guys are difficult, all right. So, we're going to only release 50% of coin as per the growth rate. Anthony, English, please. Okay. If the platform has 100 members and the platform has 100 coin, and then next month the platform goes from 100 members to 200 members, 50% of that growth rate, this was 100% growth, 50% is half of that, means this 100% growth rate in, in membership equals only a 50% growth rate in coin. Anthony, you're getting closer to English, but what does that mean? Okay. It means we will always be releasing only half the amount of coin that's newly being demanded, meaning we're always going to make sure that the demand is stronger than the supply, which means if the demand is stronger than the supply, the coin will always go up in value. If the coin always goes up in value, we can constantly sell it and people will constantly make money buying it. If people constantly make money buying it, they constantly buy more. If they constantly buy more, the money comes in, funds the platform. The more money that comes in and funds the platform allows the platform to grow, which means as the platform grows, it supports the value of the coin in January, 2023. So Ant, what you're telling me is you've figured a way that you can essentially capture the value of population and allow everyone to become millionaires during it. Yeah, I did actually. Okay, and well, what about people that don't want to buy the coin? Like, how are they going to have some coin? No, no, we're giving everyone coin. Everyone gets 50 coin per month, no matter what. Well, let me just type it one more time for all the ones that are new. You have to be part of the partnership program, right? So that's free. Just sign up. Like, stop making me beg. We're going to give everyone 50 coin per month and everyone that you bring into the platform, which you'll receive your link immediately, you give it to someone, they come onto the page and they go ahead and click that they want to be part of the webinar. You get an additional 10 coin for every person. Okay. So you're not only able to buy coin, but you're actually able to receive coin. So Ant, what's the coin going to be worth? What, you keep talking about this coin, but what's it worth? All right, let's go do it. Ah, it's 8.54. All right, give me till 9.05. I kind of went off on a tangent there. And I always find it funny. My fiance's name is Tangi, and I go off on tangents. And you would think, like, love at first sight, right? All right, share screen. All right, so what do we want to do? Oh, I already did it. Okay, so let's start from scratch. All right. So google.com. 
And everyone, please, I would like for you to do this. Our SEO is greatly benefited when you do this. And because we all own this together, this is a good thing for all of us to do, right? Distribute, not if I could spell, distributive marketing. What is distributive marketing, by the way? It's a, it's a phrase that, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a marketing that we coined. We want this to be in schools one day, distributive marketing. What is it? Well, it's marketing by distributing. I want to give you stuff so that we can all have stuff, right? Cool. Distributive marketing. Look at that, we're number three. Holy guacamole. Okay, number three on, on, on Google is kind of a big deal. All right, so AC, love chess. All right, so you go to the front page, right? We're there, Rhino Coin. Now, I kind of think my explanation today was probably my best explanation so far. So I might take this video and put it up here. And you know what's funny? I just, this explanation was, it's not like I read something, right? All right, so I'm not gonna read all of this. We all know what it says. This is some FAQs about it. And we'll get to that in a second. Okay, view Rhino balance sheet. This is the projections for the coin. Now, mind you, this is a real-time balance sheet. This you have on, you have in view only. I have it in editing, but it allows me to edit things. Not up, not, I guess edit is the correct word, but it allows me to populate and report real-time data in real time. So as you can see, all of these numbers are calculated based on the number before it. So you see this number, see the calculation that makes it up. See this number, see the calculation that makes it up. See this number, see the calculation that makes it up. They are all calculated on the number before it. Okay. Now you're going to see a green, well, first let's start here, right? The coins one and a half cents until January, 2022, like we told you. Then it's two cents till March, till February. Then it's three cents, four cents, five cents. We know this, right? Okay. You're going to see a green line coming up. This green line represents January 2023, where the coin becomes a free floating marketplace. This number right here is what we believe, the, what our estimate is of what that coin is going to be worth $2.04. Anthony, how'd you come up with $2.04? Well, do you remember that whole conversation we just had? Take that whole conversation and put numbers to it. Now, as you'll see over here, J66 times K66 times L66 times 10,000 times 0.1%. The 10,000 represents, these numbers are in percentages. So this number doesn't re represent 9.39. It represents 0 0.0939 because 9.39% when you calculate is actually 0 0.0939. So that plus that, you have to times it by 10,000 for those to actually numbers, not percentages. And then this point one is if I'm 90% wrong, if I'm only 10% right, that's what this number comes out to. So all these numbers actually factor in me being 90% wrong, which is really freaking cool. So how is this number calculated? Uh, weekly transactional volume divided by total Rhino coin supply of 1 billion, then multiplied by projected demand ratio which is Rhino coin monthly member disbursement trend plus Rhino coin weekly purchase trend divided by total supply. Then multiplied by three month growth rate in weekly transactional volume. I know that sounded like a whole bunch of blah, blah, blah. So let me make it super simple for you. Every number means something. Every number is calculated to the number next to it, which means when you come down to week 112, you see what the coins valued? 132,000. And three hundred and ninety-six dollars. Okay, and that's like a lot of money. Okay, how did that? How did we get that number? Okay, and you showed me how we got the number, but I don't really understand it. Well, let me show you in real time. So you see this number, one hundred thirty-two thousand. Blah 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 blah. Right? Just remember one hundred thirty-two thousand. As you scroll up, all right, and all these numbers mean something. Prove it. Okay, see this number five twenty-nine. This represents how many members we believe we're gonna have on our platform by week three. Let's say we're wrong and we only have a hundred members on the platform week three. You don't need to know any one of these numbers, but just look at them. You see them all change? Let's try again. 529 down to 100. 
they all changed. Remember the I told you to remember 132,000, the value of the coin week 112. Look at this. If by week three, our members go from 529 or whatever it is down to only 100, how does that affect the value of the coin 109 weeks from today? Now it's worth only 5,000. That's the power of what we're doing here. Every one of these numbers means so much based on every calculation, how intertwined and projected and growth they all are together, that by us simply providing real-time data and simply offering you a balance sheet that you can go and view anytime you want, you will always know exactly where we are and exactly where we're going, which means for you to be able to buy coin today at one and a half cents, and not only knowing that you could sell at these prices next year, because we're guaranteeing the market two cents, three cents, four cents, but to be able to be so obliged, so vision, so luxured that you could go ahead and hold it for these prices. If you owned a hundred coin at a penny and the coin goes to a hundred thousand, what is that equal for your net worth? Right? You own 100 coin at a penny, which means you spent a dollar, and you own 100 coin at 100,000, which means you're now worth 10 million. It means a $1 went to 10 million. Does that sound crazy? It does. But what are we doing? Are we do is our business something that allows crazy? What are we doing? We created a model that allows the 99% that you're only 1% to step away from the 1% and literally grow their own economy by themselves. So let me ask you this. Do you think you could make a profit if you were a part of growing a new economy? The answer is yes. Okay, so let's get out of this and I wanna go ahead and show you one more thing. So I said to you, you could sell at any point, right? Well, let me show you. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, so you own coin, you're ready to sell. Okay, so my name is Anthony. My last name is Kalashone. My email is Anthony Kalashone at Rhino Research LLC.com. Okay. I want to sell my coin in June at seven cents. I want to sell a million of my coin on that date. I'm requesting to sell Rhino. I'm not a robot. I can see the crosswalk, so I'm not a robot. And by submitting, I understand the view and uh, terms and conditions, which you can go look at. Uh, I'll just click. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I, I don't have time. Well, we don't have time, right? But I wrote this. You can see it's all in my, uh, let's pick something random. Blah, 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 blah. The value of Rhino coin between today and January 23 is managed and listed. January 2022 equals two cents. The price will increase by one cent per month until January 2023. So as you can see, it's not lawyer speak. It's Anthony speak. And you've been with me for an hour, so you know what Anthony speak sounds like. Please make sure to read this so you understand it, but there's no like, um, gotcha, right? And then you submit. Thank you for submitting, we'll be in touch shortly. That form goes directly to me and then I'm able to go ahead and price your order to be sold at that date. That's how you sell your coin. Meaning you can buy coin today and sell it at any point you want and make yourself money. And you might say, Aunt, well, that's crazy. Like, how can, that sounds too good to be true. No, if you are so short-sighted is the nicest thing I could say, that you want to sell your coin at six cents and seven cents, God bless you. I'll be the one to buy it back. You know why? Because not only do I make the numbers, but I control the platform. I'm our leader, which means I know the value of what it's going to be. And if I could buy coin from you at six cents and you're happy because you made 600%, and I'm happy because I own coin at six cents, that's gonna be 100,000, everyone's happy. So how do you get into it, right? So get Rhino coin. Click that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the link and I'm gonna share it in the chat because I want everyone to be a part of this. So please, everyone take a second, take a look at the chat, click that link and you're gonna be exactly where I am. Ah, I just spam my own chat. Once you're there, price over the next year. Here's the board of what it's going to be valued. January 22, two cents per coin. February, three cents per coin. You see it, it's right there. January 2023 market price. 
That was the green line. We saw it. How do you purchase? Rhino Coin is sold in $100 blocks so that you can very easily buy as much as you want. All right, let's say I want to buy $100 worth of Rhino Coin today. Now, the Rhino Coin is one and a half cents, which means it's $100 divided by 0 0.015, right? So that's how much coin you would receive. So I would receive 6,666 coin if I buy $100 of Rhino Coin. All right, that sounds fair to me. Let's do it. Purchase. Now, this says nine because I bought eight the other day. So let's go to one. So one quantity of $100 equals total of $100. See this SSL secure shopping? This is so important. This guarantees your security. If you don't see this on someone's site, run. Excuse me. Then press checkout. What you'll find in the checkout is where you put your information. This is my email. This is my first name. This is my last name. You don't need to know my address. This is my city. This is my state. This is my zip code. And this is my phone number minus the last three digits. So if you want to try like 999 different combinations to get it, good luck. In fact, I would actually really, you know how much you have to love someone to do that? So I would appreciate it. Continue. Delivery methods free. Upon completing, you're going to receive an immediate email notification of an invoice confirming your purchase. And within, so we were doing, everyone that's bought so far has a certificate, right? The certificates, we're having a little difficulty um, automating them. And we will get it done. But I did say that everyone will receive automated certificates by Monday. Give me a couple of days on that, which means whatever you purchase today, I guarantee you'll receive the certificate by Friday because I'll do it manually if I have to. But again, we're coding that, so just give it a day or two, but you'll receive that in the email. Continue. You put in your card information or payment information, continue, and you're done. Upon owning the coin, you are then put on our public ledger, which is actually going to be on the site quite soon. Uh, by the end of the week, but I want to give it, I want to show you what it looks like so that you understand what's going on. So first of all, this is the Rhino coin certificate. It'll say your purchase price. I'll sign it, how much coin you purchase. So the amount divided by the purchase price equals how much coin you own, right? So you will receive this. It has our logo on it, our seal, completely certified. Cool. Public ledger. This will be on the website soon. And everyone that purchases, again, everyone will know their own name, right? Oh, fuck me. I didn't want to do that. Hold on a second. Let me just take this for a second. You know, I thought I, oh, I know what I did. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see something. Not that. Yeah, is it right? Okay, ledger. Here we go. So this is the ledger so far. As you can see, it's in a dock. It's going to be brought to the site fairly soon. Um, I would say by the end of the week. And you can see who owns what. Now, of course, it's only people's first name and the first letter of their last name. So that's to keep them private. Like you don't know who that person is, but that person knows who that person is, right? So Dr. B, you know who knows who Dr. B is? Dr. B. But you know what you know? Who the hell just makes up Dr. B? And Dr. B has a lot of coin. In fact, a lot of people have a lot of coin. And then this is the chart of all the coin that's owned. This is updated every weekend or every end of the week which means you'll always know who owns what and how much is out there. The point of me doing that is so that everyone in the community owns the company, everyone sees what everybody owns and everyone's a part of it because if everyone helps each other, works together, moves in the same direction, we have the ability right now to turn one cent into $100,000 like people that buy Dogecoin or Shiba coin or GameStop. It's just a collection of people that have money that say, if everyone's willing to do it, I'll do it. Let's prosper together. That's what we're doing. That's how we have it. And that's what's going on. All right. So I think, you know, I think that was pretty good. 
So it's 9.09, I said 9.05, I'm kind of close to it, but I will stop at 9.10. So the last thing I wanna do, get the Rhino coin. I'm putting it in here again. Guys, this is a good idea. And listen, if you don't, anyone that doesn't purchase, that's on you. I'm not making anyone do anything. If it ends up being that I'm going to own a whole bunch of coin, I'm good with it. But just know that the purchase of the coin directly fund the platform. And more so than that, you're able to fund your own financial freedom. And we're doing it together. We have the sheets. We, do you think I'm out here an hour every single night because I'm bored? I'm not. I do it because I'm accountable to you. All right, so we're gonna stop there, stop the share. And guys, seriously love you. Have the most amazing evening. Tomorrow, we're gonna go more into, you know what, let me spend some time tomorrow on partnership. So I will, uh, I'll go ahead and put some stuff together and we'll walk through it together. And that makes you awesome. You know what, Brian, that makes you awesome. So love everyone, get the coin, please. Allow me to understand that this uh, that I got through to someone tonight, okay? And actually, hold on. And I see purchases. So, guys, you're welcome. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Good night.